Hi guys, it's Red Elric here. I'm filming in my bathroom um, just because I've been papering in here today and I've just stopped because I've run out of wallpaper. I've got to go and get some more. So I thought I'd stop and have a, a pipe. Uh, I'll get the housekeeping out of the way first. I'm going to be having my first smoke of my Christmas, yeah I know it's backwards because this phone's useless. My Christmas pipe 2017 model XL11, a lovely pipe and I'm going to put the Christmas blend in there as well because it's a lovely aromatic and as it's not even December yet, it's November and I'm still on my smoking English blends all through November and I just got fed up. I thought if I have another English blend I've got to try an aromatic and you know I've gone for I just had a whiff of that and I thought I'm gonna have some of that. Okay but uh, I'll start that in a sec but um, just to tell you what this video is for it's a video response to Swing Kid 100 and uh, the subject is hats so I'll just pause this a sec while I set my pipe up I'm just loading this about half full because it's its first first time I smoked it mm. the aromatic uh, Christmas blend 2017 an arom arometto arometto delicious and I'll be dedicating uh, as long as I can get that tobacco I'll be using it in that point I don't know how long I'll be able to get it or how much I'll be able to sell it but these Petersons in these tins don't because they're not vacuum sealed, they don't sell it very well, so I think I'd have to get some in a jar pretty quick and sell it in an airtight jar. Um, but some of the other pipes I've picked up today, I've been looking at other pipes and uh, from my collection, picking them up. And I picked up um, one of my Atlantics, the 68, and as soon as I put it in my mouth and I could taste the um, special flake number two and then I picked up my Peterson sandblasted apple uh, model bent apple the 03 and straight away I could taste the apple um, of the aromatic apple flavour tobacco that I use in there okay I'm going to start it off with a slave of a match and a light open. Taking the end of my thumb off. Ha ha. I'm doing this because the tobacco is quite deep down and I don't really want to burn the edge of the bowl. Hatch. Mmm, I've got a box full of hats. I've got a box full of hats. Because I when we moved I put all my hats in um, all together in a box. And the thing is I like hats. But it's hard to get good quality hats. There used to be a shop in town, Dun and Co. I mean, my dad who was a, my dad was always a smart dresser. He believed in quality in clothes. He'd probably really be interested in the clothes that uh, Swing Kid 100 wears. 
I might have to use the lights in a sec. He used to go to Dun & Co in town and you could get a good quality hat made to measure, you know, check the size and get one. And uh, now most of the hats available, that, you know, when I want to find a hat, it's usually in supermarkets and you pick, you think that's a nice hat and you pick it up and it says, either says one size or they have small to medium, medium to large, and then the one's too small and the other one's too big. So you end up buying caps that you can adjust like this one. And this is one I used to wear when I was exercising. So I've got very sort of yellowy with the sweat. So I'm not mad on that one. I honestly, Without really thinking too hard, I can't remember what hats I've got in the box. But I wish I had a really good hat. There was like um, my signature style hat. The trouble is, a lot of time hats that I think will suit me, when I actually get one, put it on, and I think that no, doesn't suit my funny shaped head. I've got one of these strange kind of caps where they're squarish around the edge. I think that kind of suits me, but I got it from Forbidden Planet, so there's probably some comic reference to it. Not comic as in funny, but, you know, illustrated novel reference to it. It's sort of Japanese slight of, type of theme, so... And it was... Uh, I just liked it when I saw it, so I got it. But... I don't know if it's really me. I think maybe I'm a bit old for it. But it is one of the few hats that looks okay on my funny shaped head. I've got kind of beanie sort of fleecy hats because I used to work outside a lot. Sort of woolly beanies. Uh, Army Berry from back in the mob, beanies from endurance type of things. Oh, this is a weird one. It's a kind of hat that you wear underneath when you're running. It looks completely odd. It's just the kind of thing just to keep your head warm when you're jogging. Makes you look like a complete pillar. I'm not going to even put that on, it's just another beanie. I've got this, which is probably more my style. That's from my beer festival days when I used to go to quite a few of them. Probably a little bit festive this time of year, it's got bells on it, but maybe that's okay with my Christmas pipe. So I stopped then because I could hear some football chanting, there must be a match on in town. Where we are, we're close enough to town to be able to hear people at the football stadium now. Um, one of the hats I used to have, which I guess is the closest thing I can think of to it being my style, my sort of signature type hat. I used to work at um, Wolverhampton Racecourse, which is a horse race track. And I noticed that there seems to seem to be a sort of hierarchy of hats. 
So, if you was an official, or a steward, or an owner, they all wore trilbies. Every race day you could see them walking around in their three-piece suit um, and trilby hats. Wax barber jackets, all that malarkey. Hunter wellies and trilby hats. If you was lower in standing, if you was like a trainer or a stable lad or stable girl or something to do with setting up the starts or something, then generally they wore flat caps. So even if they dressed similar, even if there was a higher of the of the lower class, if you was a higher of you, you had a suit on, but you'd still wear the cap, so that people wouldn't would, I guess they'd recognise amongst their own circle. Oh, he must be one of the training types, not the owner types. And just to mix things up a bit, to be a bit anarchic to the system. So one of the jobs I had on race day was I used to set up the start for the hurdle races and the steeple chases. I used to have to go out, set the spikes up, set the elastic across, which the horses would then, the jockeys and horses would line up to the elastic. The starter would come with his trilby on, get up on the box, call the jockeys forward, so ready jockeys under orders and pull the thing and I'd be on the radio saying okay they're lining up they're under orders under starters orders they're off just to let the stewards know and just to mix things up to throw a bit of confusion in I wore a pork pie hat upturned brim all the way around and it a flat top, it was unusual, it wasn't like your traditional pork pie hat that you see people that are into like jazz music and stuff wearing. It was actually a skateboarder's, a skateboarder's pork pie hat. It had a brand name on, because I used to be into skateboarding. I used to do all that nonsense where you try and break your legs. Um, It was a skateboarding clothes brand name, which was Stussy. So it had in big letters across the top, Stussy across the top and Stussy round the back. But the problem was you couldn't see all the letters at the same time. So usually people would only see the Ussy and they'd think that I'd got the word Pussy written on my hat. Which you don't really want to walk around with it hat on with a sign that says pussy on. Um, so I used to move my head around a lot so they could see it said stussy. But I guess the other thing was if I was looking back on archive races and taken at the racetrack and I, I look back, I can make out where I am at the start, because the cameras are obviously looking at the horses starting, and I can pick myself out running around because I'm there with this pork pie hat on. But I ended up using it when I used to go plastering after, which was another of my jobs. And so it ended up getting covered in plaster and stuff, and I could never get it clean. So it's somewhere in my garage now, and probably only fit for the bin. So I really would like I really would like a nice decent hat. As you can see, I've just got caps and beanies and things. But I'd like something, try and find something which actually suits me. There's a nice hat, I think it's called a hornbeam or something like that. I know that's a tree. Um, it's like a more stocky version of a trill beat with a crease down the middle and brim turned either side. You know, I like quality hats like that. Um, 
one day I might get one. But it's finding somewhere where they do decent, good quality hats. I'll probably have to go to Birmingham and pay over the odds. But I guess it's not something you buy every day. Um, so yeah, that's what I'd like to do. So, I have hats, but not of good quality, but I would like to. So there you go. Well, this is gurgling a little bit, but I'm loving the pipe, and I'm loving the tobacco. Beautiful. XL11, did I say it was? I should know these things, I should know this before I start. Yeah, XL11 Christmas pipe with a fantastic Christmas tobacco in. Lovely. So there you go. Um, Swing Kid 100, if you haven't watched his videos, go and watch them. I, when I'm decorating like I have been today, or, or doing any housework or, or any DIY, I like to put on YouTube videos and I like to catch up with people because I've been so busy, I don't get to just sit down and watch these videos, so I like to catch up with the people. I find uh, Swing Kid 100's videos very interesting. And I like his style. And I know he said when he went, I saw him at the pipe show, and I liked what he said about, um, he said on his video about the pipe show that he doesn't find it easy to go up and speak to strangers, but he felt at home there and felt welcome there. And you know, I hear a lot of people that went there that make videos. I think we all have this bit of that we, we've seen each other on videos, but it's I find it difficult to go and just start conversations and, and that. Um, sometimes I try and put on a bit of a front, but I do find it difficult. And I think it makes it easier if we know that we all do. You know, that we're all human. We have our own sort of um, weaknesses and that wasn't the word I was looking for, but I've lost the word I was looking for. Um, we all have these things we have to try to overcome and go up and talk to people. It just makes it easy when you know that you're not the only one who finds it difficult. Um, so hearing people that said that, going back perhaps next time, I'll be able to find a little bit more courage to go up and sit with people and have a chat and you know what, even if we can't think of anything to say, who cares? We've got a pipe, we can sit there and smoke it. Okay, thank you for watching guys. See you next time. Mm. Sorry, just a little postscript. Um, having, what I normally do is watch the video back and realise if there's any sort of errors that I've made. And uh, the hat I called was a Homburg. I think it's a Homburg. I called it a Hornbeam. I knew it was wrong. Uh, I think my granddad had one. I'm sure I've seen an old photograph of my granddad with a Homburg on. And um, the other error I noticed was when I said that the hierarchy at the racetracks used to wear trilbies. That was what I called them then, I used to think of them. Probably the correct name is that they were all fedora hats. Because I'm not sure, but I think a trilby is a slight, is a sort of, it's like a fedora with a narrower brim. So, there you go. Maybe I'm uh, correcting my errors. And maybe I'm getting it even more wrong. Who knows? Still smoking this and it's still fantastic. Fantastic. You can probably see it in better light now. So, 
it's been going now for about 15 minutes I should say perhaps longer perhaps 20 20 25 minutes so still smokes well mm. okay Carol